It's uh, Mr. Everard's helping me find my gun. What a nice guy, that Mr. Everard. What a nice guy. I don't think he's that nice of a guy. All right. Speaking of guys being nice. Hi, Kim. All right. So let's see. Investigate doomed commercial area for the malignant and- Oh, right. The dumb bitch. I- So wait, I- Didn't I already investigate this whole area? Oh, I gotta put the- I gotta put the, the flashlight on or else Kim is gonna complain. He's gonna be like, it's dark in here. There's the ice chest. This orange machine is- You slip your thing- No. If you want to equip the pry bar. Oh right, the super pry bar. I do not have the super pry bar. A Click. Thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, <laughs> coloring it pitch black. Wait. Yell hello into the furnace. You muster all your strength and yell. Seventy-two percent. Are you he he he? Your throat can produce little more than a dry croak. Awkward, since you already had a drink. A lifetime of smoking and drinking will do that to you. Thanks, Volition. The chatter from the chimney continues on as before. You seem to have made no impression on whatever's up there. Then again, maybe it's worth actually trying something up there. Hmm. Maybe you should let your voice rest, officer. Try again later. Smear your hands with coal. A lush layer of coal now Because I can, I guess. Sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karazai, ancient huh? hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. We smear our cheeks with coal. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? I am the reincarnation of an ancient Lamari and warrior. Please wipe your face clean, officer. <laughs> Don't wipe it. These three stripes give you strength in this <laughs> dangerous realm. I refuse. I refuse to wipe it. We're exploring this dark place. I need the protection my war paint affords. And this protects you. Wait. Wait, am I doing blackface? No, three dangerous stripes appear. It's just stripes. Oh, Christ, thank God. It gives me confidence, and that's all that matters, Kim. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I war painted my face. I can do this again. Another pathetic yelp sounds off into the vast darkness of the chimney. You're a little embarrassed you produced it. Oh. My. Fucking. God. Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. Are you Connected shitting me? No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Physical instrument. Level up. I must yell in this furnace. I have to do it. A thick layer of coal dust. Oh, it would all. Oh, I was waiting a for it. Bellow echoes through I was waiting sense. for it. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Oh. Then. Hello. What? You've awakened the entity. I summon the ghosts of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit. Hello? Oh. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. Oh. After you, officer. Well, that changes everything, doesn't it? <laughs> He's fucking... This guy. Floorboards creak. Shoes in melting snow. What is this? Postcard. Damn, it is so dark up here. Oh, hello. 
Colorful polyhedral dice, hundreds of them. Can dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Is a D and D person to help chilling up here? Hello, I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits in the throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Novelty dice maker. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Melius. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Uh, could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. Masquerade. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the legion. Oh, good point. I didn't think about that. Yes, Amelia is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Oh. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. <laughs> But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? I would love to talk about dice. I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? No, I was looking for something else. Squint your eyes mysteriously. Answers. No, I like role-playing games. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set. Unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there's any particular stone you want to use. Oh, stones. So this person means you or no one else. Absolutely no harm. She will answer freely and honestly. How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. <laughs> a extremely common, like, business, yeah. Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. It's weird because I still have the light, the, the, the flashlight in my hands. She's thankful for the security they provide her. Uh, I'd like to order a die from you. Tell me what you have in mind. Tell me about your most extraordinary die. A star that fell from the firmament? Those cost more than seven real. Are you sure? Oh yeah, I'm a superstar myself. A superstar! And superstars don't care about money. Yes, you definitely have the proper attitude. How about a pair of 100-sided dice? Jesus. Made of ivory and inlaid with lodestone, a naturally occurring magnet to complement your magnetic personality. I have that, all right. Then real, and I can get these ready in eight hours. It's a fucking deal. Wait, do they even roll properly? It's true. Magnetic dice are definitely different. When rolled together, the magnetic fields of the pips interact with each other to push and pull on each other as they're rolled. Just like all magnetic personalities do. It's a deal. Great. See you in eight hours then. Was there anything else? I'm getting cool dice. Yay. Uh, do you know anything about the guy in the rolling ranks? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. I... <laughs> the lieutenant looks at his notebook. Then, the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. Such as? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. Like two children throwing rocks? During daytime, there are usually those kids. Yep. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's not sorry to disappoint you. Informing on someone in a murder investigation would intrude upon her focused existence. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. I might have, 
Mm. But in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out. Is there a bedroom in here? I don't see a bed. Maybe it was downstairs. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. Hmm. She nods. Anything else, officer? Hey, where are we anyway? Good point. We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. Oh, crap. We actually are. Huh. So she did remake it. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken. So I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here. So that's a plus. <laughs> yeah. Placence was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. God damn it. Create here. Uh, okay, I've heard this people place is cursed. I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. She convinced. Oh, I'll stay with the lady. Play sounds the bookshop lady. I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? Oh God, yeah, she exploits her own daughter. She's stupid. All oh, right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Wait, yeah, is it, it's part, wait. You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Commerce Central project. Am I trying to convince her that there's malicious en entities? Uh, y you know, you're right, it doesn't look that and cursed. And there is me. Goodness. <sighs> I've been here for 14 years, selling God damn. dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? It's because she's in cahoots with the demons. <laughs> I love you, Half-Light. You're the best. Uh, it's because you're competent and dedicated to your craft. The curse doesn't affect people like you. <laughs> what, so the curse only affects people with poor work ethics? Yes. What you're describing isn't a curse. It's capitalism. Also, yes. The jig is up. The she-demon knows you've uncovered her true identity. <laughs> Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. God damn it. There's no curse. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? Blaisons is not going to like what you have to tell her. What? It's just a lady in the chimney. The bookstore closes starting 2100. You'll have to do that tomorrow. You don't have any other attendance? More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Yeah, what happened to the hair salon? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something. Similar. Androgynous Orlando? Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. <laughs> I love that name though. Androgynous Orlando. It's got some, some spice to it. But she is right. Working class men probably don't want their genderless haircuts. Uh, yeah, what's wrong with a little bit of experimenting? I guess it just wasn't the time yet. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym. It was Artemitep's boxing club. Oh. A community project created to steer at-risk youth away from drugs and crime. Oh, who was that a guy? kind man from Zemsk. I heard that's not how I thought they would pronounce that. The law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym as his way of giving back. Well, maybe that was what Kuno needs a boxing club. Hmm. Kuno? Who's Kuno? He's the little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes. Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. <laughs> I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. I would agree. It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. 
At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. Electrochemistry is about to punch, uh, chime in. You should have known it. I knew it. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. There used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? Melius is what she called her like audiobook stuff, right? Her listening. So it's just snuff books. And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. What, what is this? It's a sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some oh. people pay good money to get off on it. Oh. What does she mean to get off on it? Electrochemistry. That should have been a failure. The fact that it's a success and you don't know what that means is worse. Don't worry. The ICP has a separate division that deals <laughs> exclusively with unlicensed sub roses. This isn't our problem. Oh, a whole side agency. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Someone in chat says, Boy, you should co string with Project Melody 100%. Is this because of the snuff? I have my eye on you. Someone here makes stuffed animals. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Electrochemistry is piping in again. But what drugs exactly? He got high on some weird <laughs> taxidermy chemicals. <laughs> we need to know the drugs. Recommended to anyone. Eventually, they caused him to lose control of his bladder. The smell was awful. Oh, what the hell? Even you can probably do better than that. Twitchermen, untime out that man. They're allowed to, to essay the, for collabs and shit. Don't be mean. <laughs> you can almost see it. A small, sickly old man hunched behind his work desk. His pants stained with old piss. Oh. Stuffing a sad, stiff-legged raccoon dog. Uh. The entire scene looks tragic. I don't empathy. I didn't need to think about that. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. I didn't know insects had any rights or activists. Yeah, the atelier didn't know it either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently, huh. chitin is made in the occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. Oh. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. No, I I know the I know I know who Project Melody is. Don't worry, I, I I'm I'm familiar. I just didn't I I just was surprised the recommendation occurred after the snuff statements. It made me laugh. And naturally, it was it was a funny coincidence. All the tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. Hmm. So Occident is is uh, U U.S. or um, U.C. Berkeley. Got it. I'm glad that someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. See, I just want to say little guys, so I'm gonna nod. Hmm. Really? Anyway. She looks at the windowsill where a dead fly is lying on its back, legs curled up as a bow tie. Oh. Suddenly. You get a feeling that insects are important to the case somehow. <laughs> it's hard to say why. What about the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chef executive took off on a vacation with all their money. Ew. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. What does the transmission say? The usual, I imagine. That he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. <laughs> Men like that are a curse. Uh huh. <laughs> sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. 
I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. Maybe you could make a sword out of one. <laughs> no, wait, forget it. It would take too long. But it'd be funny. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She liked them. Hmm. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. Oh, D and D. They certainly took their work very seriously, <laughs> even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. You mean never was ever able to meet? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. Oh, oh, that version of liberal. Well, I did hear them talk. The money about version of liberal. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. It did look impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. Oh, I love it. I love the I love the the self the 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 self fucking um uh jabs I, I i really i enjoy i enjoy the fact that they're like yeah they had a whole lot of money for their project blew it all and then blamed capitalism and be like hey you know capitalism has a lot of problems don't get me wrong but uh this it wasn't capitalism's fault that your shit got ruined is because when you have when you have a huge budget and no restraints, people will gra gradually tend to do less. That's just because comfort is like the medium we all get attracted to. So it makes sense. She's right. Showing up to work on time is important. Thanks, Authority. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult, <laughs> especially if you've been drinking. I would have supported the project. Not the wisest decision. Oh. You would have lost all your savings. Oh. Damn it. The Tommy Tallarico special. The result is one on a 20 sided die. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. That's cool. Anything else? Uh, two more. Taxidermy bear in the oh cellar. Boy, the fabled Reva Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. Okay. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Okay. There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. Uh-huh. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dare to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Sounds like she really didn't like those girls. I know cashier just fucking like that. Employing silky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow ICT. It's just a little judgy, but okay. And they already had the bear. What about the bear? The bear. What? Okay. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either. And half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. I'm glad we didn't have the body in it for too long. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only five cents a piece out of regular fridges. <laughs> it's the market doing its job. Oh, capitalism. Maybe, because the taxidermist who made the bear definitely wasn't. Doing his job, I mean. He said that the bear was his vision beast. What? He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. <laughs> Scary, but cool. 
mega thick. I like. I feel like Half Life. You know what Half Life reminds me of? Half Life reminds me of Grunt in Mass Effect Two. He just reminds me of Grunt. He's just like base instincts, which makes sense because it's it's like fight or flight, you know. But I like the idea of like it, the bear's name was Destroyer of Worlds, and then the Half Life will say, "I like that name." That's a name for a bear. It's just awesome. Megatherium, a mega wild beast. It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. A wise and noble beast, guiding you toward the land where the streets are paved with drugs. I don't do drugs. I'm a good soul. Very good. You shouldn't do them. You're a police officer after all. Anyway, I was expecting Kim to pipe up. Ice cream empire. The temperature has dropped in the cover of the night. You see frost on the windows. Anything else? Last Another one. Intercom. Business, perhaps? Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. Oh. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. Oh. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. Oh, so you're the new person. That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. Yeah, what's East Delta Pinball? Right. It used to be a gaming arcade. Let's go! It's an ancient failure. Oh. Before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floreography, trick track, especially pinball. What? Agreed. Pinball is the worst. What? His disdain for pinball could not be clearer. I like pinball. Sure, I'm listening. I'm pretty sure I'm listening. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. I'm listening. Good. There we I go. hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Okay. I want to take this. I want to. I want to take this. This test. I need better shivers. That's minus one shivers. Aha. Okay. Drama. Plus one shivers. Okay. We're dressing up for shivers. All right. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? We make these. A gust of cold air sweeps through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. This is still just a theory, but hear me out. I think I know why your business hasn't failed. Didn't we already talk about this? It's because you're not in the same building as the others. This isn't technically the doomed commercial area. What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sangeran 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. No, this is, used to be a coal plant. You're in chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? I have unusual methods. And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? Don't let her become complacent. She still needs to ward her soul against the evil forces. <laughs> it's just the workshop. Why am I convincing her of this? She starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face. What? Do you know what this is? She raises her hand to reveal a piece of metal shining on her index finger. Jewelry? It's a morning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with a little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. See, the curse is real. No, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> I bet you didn't run this little jewelry shop from the protective depths of the chimney. It wasn't just the jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. And now you're telling me what? 
that it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? I... No. This isn't what I'm saying, but I wanted to do the check. Uh, it's cozy in here. Yeah. Or maybe... I'm not, I'm not I'm not saying this at all. Forced. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. I roll for my... for two las cannons. Double ones. Oh. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. But anyway... Thanks for sharing your theories, mm. officer. She seems nice. The precarious world. I'm running out of spots to, to internalize thoughts. Well, I guess that's that. Let's get out of here, Kim. We learned about all the businesses, and we learned about the dangers of capitalism. Turns out capitalism is the curse on the world, after all. Yuck, 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 yuck. All right. I should make... Oh, wait, I want to wear that other... I want to wear that nice necklace that they gave me. Ah, here we are. Is there anything that's minus one? Reaction speed and drama. This gives me both benefits. That gives me one less empathy. Wait, this one gives me a lot. Oh, but I have a plus empathy somewhere. This is good enough for me. All right. Hey, uh, bookstore lady, I figured out the problem with your world. It's just some nice dice lady. It's locked. All right. Well, day four is coming up soon. Um, and I'm getting my dice soon. Missing insects case. A cell. Sink the signs with noid. Dead body on the boardwalk. Call oh, I gotta call the station about it. That's right. Inside, you see a set of steering levers. I got a, a microphone. Thing. A pull-out toolbox and... This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, b dead body. One moment. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? All these funny things here? We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No. No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? Yep, all of the stuff. Any information on the library card? In this library. Good. You have a lead? Yes. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking the case. Wahoo! I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Jamrock, public library. I'm afraid they're closed. Mother. It says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 We should try again. Anything else? To 50 In the cabin, you see a set of... You know, I've, I've never done these three. I'm going to touch them now. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Your fingers waste no time closing around the handle. Clutch disengaged. It's a very bizarre Raise looking hand, car. Engine in the drops, back. Right all this glass. The familiar touch of the accelerator pedal. You have synced with the, the suspension on the front. Circulation. You feel an uninterrupted connection to the mechanics. After a while, you realize silence is your only answer. Do what you will with it. Of course, it's only in your head. Of course, it is. I know how to drive this thing. I know very well. Gently squeezing back. How have you been, my friend? The smell of freshly treated leather, the lack of dirt and dust on the dashboard, and a neat little brush in the cup holder, all seem to be whispering. I'm good, cherished and cared for in the hands of a tending owner. At the bottom of the sea. 
Oh, crap. So strange. The machine is not on the bottom of the sea at all. It's right in front of you. <laughs> well kept. Why did it say that? <laughs> Dark feeling. This is going wrong. Let go of the clutch. The handle is pulled back. Yay, experience. Deep inside the drivetrain, the disc is mated to the flywheel. Again. In the cabin, you see as you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin. I might get a few more a bits of XP for this. It's in the small blue sector, indicating the engine is cold. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. He says jingling the keys. Alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. <laughs> this is the Coupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with a motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. Nothing, nothing. It's probably nothing. Forget I brought it up. Please proceed with the carefree lollygagging. <laughs> Thanks, Inland Empire. No, I'm afraid not. We have a murder case on our hands, remember? Kim's a car guy. You can tell that Kim's a car guy. A motorized vehicle, officer. I'm sure you are familiar with the concept. Do all policemen in the RCM have such cool century. motor carriages? The Cupris Motorcar does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. But this is different. This is a sports model. Ooh! You're right. I didn't take you for a motorcar enthusiast. Do you also like Tip Top, detective? You're right, a vainglorious smile spreads over his face as he pats his machine. Tip top, I adore it! Really? Well, I'm not indifferent on the matter either. Aww, oh, visibly pleased to have found a fellow fan. Aww, oh, my heart. Kim likes his cars. And he's happy that I like cars. Aww, oh, that's sweet. Alright, well that's good to note there. Um, let's see. Joyce has an impossible attempt. We also have a couple other things here. Uh, let's see. Backyard wall conceptualization. Titus is nearly impossible. There's the wash basin over here. Cafeteria window. And Lilia, Lilian, the net picker. Okay, um... You know what? We'll do one thing. We'll try to conceptualize the uh, the mural or whatever the hell, and then after that we'll go to bed. Alright, we are going to attempt to conceptualize this wall before we end. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see. Here. Oh my god. I get plus two. For, I, get, I have plus four. I have plus four on this check. And yet, I still can only make this on double sixes. You have no clue. It's just a wall. So many walls all over Mott. Good lord. Good lord. Okay, let's continue. Damn, we were almost there too. All right. Are you the weird capitalism guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, the uh, cops are gone. Uh, I guess it's time for me to go to my room now. Yes? Should we... 
Should we debrief at the... Should we debrief on the balcony? It'd be kind of nice. Hello? The lieutenant's door is closed. No response. What are you doing? Still, no response. Where is he? Isn't it party o'clock? Doesn't he want to go for a little drive? Anything to not face the hanged disco man yet. I should stop bothering Kim. I thought we would talk on the, uh... I thought we would be chatting on the, the, the balcony. Oh, I thought we'd have like a, like a, a nightly debrief. Oh shit, I was supposed to talk to the guy on the, on the thing, the smoker. Well, Kim's not here. Normally I would want to bring Kim with me for this investigation, but he's, uh, he's sleepy. Time to go talk to the dude on the balcony, I guess. This is a bad idea. I don't think this is a good idea. I don't trust me. We're about to find out. Balcony. Oh, there he is. Sup, friendo? How's it going? Jean de Marie, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile and I know driving. It seat. feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. And his shirt is still unbuttoned. Yes, the cleaning lady let me in. She also let me to your apartment. Beautiful. He keeps probably smiling as he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? I forget what I said to them earlier, so I'll just say yes. Beautiful. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Yeah, it does feel like the end of the week. Such gentle weather. Trust me, you do. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. Run where? To the city. It's a beautiful night. A man on high heels stumbles out of a basement club. Music blasting over the entire district. It's chilly. And as the chemicals hit his nervous system, a thousand shivers ripple through his body. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Take care, all right? Why? I'm about to have gay sex. I'm about to have gay sex. The sex is occurring. The sex is happening. There's gonna be sex. Nice cock. Hey. What is this? Officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia. The man in business casual removes his cufflinks. You shouldn't be seeing him in an intimate setting. For some reason, you feel this man is your superior. What? Superior, but he's not in the command chain. My name is Charles Vildrouin, 
and I am an official with the coalition government. Oh. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Clé. Oh. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. No, first ask an innocuous personal question to get the interview off on the right foot. Yes, make it clear you're the one setting the terms here. Yeah, let's fuck with him. Who does he think he is assisting you? Before we, okay, go on, absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful canopy. Oh, yes. My friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where it came from. It's a mystery. <laughs> I believe they call this type of frame industrial. It's very common. What? That's really all I can tell you about it. That didn't work at all. Okay, no, it didn't. What was that? You were supposed to fuck with him, not compliment the decor. Well, I didn't have any other options, Half Light! Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral in turn feels emboldened by this. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Uh huh. Why? It stands for progress and stability. Like no, the no, no. As a whole. No, what does it stand for? It's been such a wild, extraordinary success thus far. We are very excited to take it to the next level. My guy! A supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. <sighs> you mean Revachol? No, it's going to have transparent democracy. It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. Did you say that candidate members never become real no, members? No, candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time? And evaluation. I'm way too American for this. I don't understand half this shit. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the Insul Indian Isola? Oil platforms ablaze in the night? Civil wars lasting for years? Finally, the international community is forced to step in. What did he- what? No one becomes friends that way. What? One of the wonders of democracy is that everyone is allowed to have his own opinion. And not just allowed, encouraged even. Have you ever tried debate? Debating. You should consider joining a debating society for adults. I hear they're oodles of fun. I used to have a flyer for one, but... But now that I start thinking of it, it was for an improv class anyway. It's this funny theater thing, you know? Very creative. Helps relieve stress. Who is he? Sorry. Who? What? But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future. Oh my god. Is, he, 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 oh our my god. I'm, I'm, I'm talking it to the most... I'm talking to the most political person in the whole game. They don't... They, they, they curve around every fucking question I give them. Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Oh my god. He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? 
The world is open wide for a talented youth like you. Oh, what are you doing in this apartment? I'm just enjoying the view. It's dark out, idiot. Listen. A baby is crying in the neighboring apartment. Someone's baby is crying. Oh, no, listen. The Insulindian Bay. I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. I fucking hate this guy. I fucking hate this guy. He's so infuriating. Like like Everett, you know, like 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 e e Everett. I I had I said the same thing, but Everett's like at least fun. At least Everett's like at least enjoyable to talk to. This guy is awful. I'm all ears, officer. You witnessed the lynching. I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Oh my god, moving this camera. Oh my god. Because I did it. <laughs> What did you see? Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. <sighs> no, no. I mean, it was so strange. I could barely believe what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood I should not be seeing this. I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. Okay. Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? Were any of them really huge? It's a giant you're describing. No, they were all quite human. As far as I could tell. Drummers? Why? No. But then, I don't know what a drummer is supposed to look like. <sighs> I went back inside. Yes, back inside. Keep yourself safe from the killing. Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. <sighs> All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. What? And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. Okay, if if we're oh Jesus Christ, this guy, I hate him so much. Um, uh, so, okay, um, I I find it humorous how they have all these fancy fake names for all of the various types of uh, ethnicities, but white is still just like. Ah, it's just white. I like that they, they gave like all these fake ver like you can spend like an hour listening to Measurehead talk about race theory and all the fake races they've made up to resemble real races, and then it's just like yeah, it's white. It's I don't know how you pronounce that word. Are are a I, Oh goodness, I, I'm assuming that means black because Titus the Hardy Boys I think had two black guys. There's the old there's the old man which was one of them. I think there was two. Well, that's the strangest part, officer. I don't remember. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. No gunshots is surprising, because he's got a bullet You're right, in his cool. mouth. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. I was simply in shock. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. All I can say is that it was late. Oh my God. My watch. Yes, now I remember. It was 30 minutes past midnight, give or take. You didn't actually witness the hanging yourself, no, did you? I didn't you? see the corpse until the following day. Well, that was a waste of time. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance. I hate this person. The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a hard day. The economy impacts the entire international community which is why it requires international oversight. Ah, <sighs> uh, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. So you're a bureaucrat? Yes. 
as I said before, yeah. I'm a commissioner from Sur La Clé, working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. La Communauté Internationale is what Rivacholian's colloquial... These words are too long. I, I, it hurts. My, it hurts small brain, Bricky. La Communauté... I was, I, it's too much. The words are too long. Ten letters or less. It is the most important thing. Do not za me. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. <sighs> maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity. I can't. Which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment. I can't. Which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Take your daily bread, for example. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just no, below No, 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 I'm not an, I'm not an economist. I'm not an economist. But not too far below. No. The coalition believes in the important No, I'm good. I don't want a leaflet. I Fuck off. I don't have my leaflets on me today. I'm not, oh. Oh. It's the internet. Of course. Okay, okay, fine. So that actually matters. He's a, he's a moralist. It's the international organization of moralists, hence moralist international. This oh my god. <sighs> But why? Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. I can't. The Occident is part of the normal world. Oranier, sur la clé, Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. Rivachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here. Relatively speaking. Moralism is boring. Do you think peace is boring? Yeah, what shit sounds like a snooze fest. My friend, that is only because you have never known What the, the fuck? And I pray you never do. Someone ring my doorbell. They have a clipboard. I ain't fucking going outside. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Was there anything else you want? What's there? Moreover, because- Nope, General don't know. Don't care. Oranier. I'm doing this for XP only. It's very early. Whatever you wish. A moment. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once we leave. Yeah, work here is done. Eat my ass. Of course. All right. You know what? I'm checking out these floorboards. Yay, a cool hat. Yay, a uh, cool robe. Thanks for the extra thanks for the extra clothes, dude. I'm nope, nope. You know what? I don't I don't know if my personal political ideologies are not uh, I resemble moralists, but you know he, you know what I have in my mind? Here's the thing. You know what? I'm got holy shit. Okay, so I can't. I can't. So so we, we found the four, right? I found the four. We have Rene, which is the, the nationalistic person, or you could also go to Gary, the, the, the crypto fascist. I guess I don't know, it could be either. Um you've got Evart, Evart, who is who is the goddamn uh, the communist. You now have Joyce, who is the liberal, and then you have fucking uh the Sunday friend dude who's the moralist. You know, moralists might be one of my my like thought processes, one of the things that I can I can maybe be like, oh you did uh, maybe it's like like you know, it's uh, a little, like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, that thing. It seems to a lot of you that I was going to go the moralist route. However, I got to be honest, uh, even though I am not like a fan of late stage capitalism, I like some capitalism. Like I do enjoy the concept of, of working for your own kind of thing. You know, that, that rise and grind stuff. But you know, it, the rise and grind's got like some kind of its own thing. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're like this right now when it comes to the world. Like, like there's a lot of money on top and not a enough down bottom. I like the concept of capitalism, but like, it's just gotta shrink a little bit, you know? It's just like, it's gotta do this a little bit, gotta go down here, you know? A little, little, little more pulling down from there, a little more pulling up from there, you know, just like a little bit of that kind of thing, but you know, I wouldn't know if I call myself like a full-on fucking rise and grind, sigma grind set fucking son of a bitch. That being said, this guy sucks! This is the worst fucking person I've talking to, spoken to the entire fucking game and for that reason alone fuck moralism i'm going with joyce joyce is cool joyce is badass i like joyce i don't know which one's the the liberal one
Is it indirect modes of taxation? You may answer. You may tell me the answer. It's taxation. And I'm proud to be an American. Or at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget men who died. <laughs> who gave that light to me. And so I just stand up next to you. There is no stronger motivator in the entire fucking world than spite. And that was the worst character I've ever spoken to in this game. Everard may be a conniving scumbag who, who granted, uh, is a, is a little too, um, oh, I don't know, fat to be a true member of the people, to be a true, to be a, a, a true, uh, um, uh, uh, working man's gentleman. And Joyce might, in fact, be, uh, completely evil, uh, and, and be an absolute, like, money grubbing, uh, uh, like, conniving person but god fucking damn it at least they're characters at least they're fucking people at least they 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 have intrigue sunday friends sucks we've chosen our path our path has been decided we are liberals dios mio The window stands broke. You see some light. You see some light. You see some. You see some light. A mirror hangs on the bar. They're all locked. <sighs> Time to rise and grind. What the hell is this? <laughs> is Kim gonna say something about this? We're gonna find out. It's bedtime. The fan stand. The bed is still cold from the broken window and not too in. It's sleep time. All right, limbic it's system, easy, talk to me. But your bones are so tired from what feel like weeks of work on the case. You have to try. After what feels like hours, you feel you might be sleeping. Thoughts, baby. Oh, goodness a gracious. little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever. On Faraday. Nice cock. Spinning in eternity? On and on it goes. For untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Uh-oh. Rising. Uh-oh. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time, the last time, the smoke in her mouth, the plotted flowers, it's the faces, it's not turning, plotted, changing. It's not plotted, it's potted. It's the world, Harry boy. Harry and boy. you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. All stuck on loop. Whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. That's me. Meaningless, meaningless keepsake. Don't worry, I'm gonna sell them to Roy. 
Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. I am. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? For the working class. For the money, baby. <laughs> for the greater good. I don't have. I don't have. Um nationalism yet so that's the last one we're like for king and country i guess solving your little crossword puzzles doing your tasks crossing names off lists trying to become some sort of world detector it won't make it okay it won't put smoke back in her mouth ah this is where i need to pick a side huh or i can still be a fence sitter I see that I see that we're actually uh we don't we still don't have the nationalistic choice. We're in it for the money, baby. Rise and grind. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, our Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world changing around him. He's got no idea what he's in for. <laughs> So near love can break your heart. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. At least I slept. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. Do it for the wind. At least I slept. Hey, Money Mouth, Indrak, the impeccable hustler provider of the seventh generation. It's showtime with Savvy. Savvy Fair is Savvy. Oh, so now it's Savvy. What's up, buddy? What's up? I'm worried about what's down, broke boy. <laughs> I'm talking about your severe lack of money. Money? That's right. It's time to stop muttering about your economic self-interest and actually do something about it yeah i heard you back there what the hell was that what do you expect i'm an ultra liberal i speak ultra liberal essay good good gotta spread the gospel but talk alone oh no it's ultra liberal it's time for step two i thought it was essay like the guy in the church Ultra liberal essay. No, it's ultra liberal ease, my man. Listen, if you really want to make it in the big leagues, you need to reconceptualize your entire portfolio. <laughs> Collecting tear and moaning about taxes is not going to cut it. You need to become a millionaire. Now, how do you become a millionaire? Manana flicked me a coin. <laughs> I could sell Kim's motor. Oh, fuck no. Uh, that's it. That's all I have to say. Manana flicked me a coin. One coin. Shit. The first of many. Imagine so many coins. You're going to need to hire someone to help you manage all your wealth. Really? That's it? That's all I have to say? Why aren't you guys helping me out? Those guys, they're all financially illiterate. Only Savvy here knows how to dazzle and embezzle money. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't don't let with don't let the IRS hear that prowess of a four time gold medalist in the Samarin gymnastic summer games. Money is only one form of capital. Human relations are another. You're focusing on the wrong things. You could force a coin inside you. Any hole will do. Not many more definitive tests of a man's metal than the fortune yawn. All right, Endurance, you got to back this up. Of course you don't. You've never even been close to a sum with more than three zeros. Let's face it, you've been on a years-long losing streak. But Savvy's got your back. Savvy's going to book you a charter flight with 80 birds of prey on board. 
to a land where the streets are paved with Krugerrands and fixed income securities. You'll try again, but this time with money. You'll win her back. Oh dear. Are you in? Win whom back? The spirit of ultra-liberalism. Oh. Your charm. Your spin. Your winning hand. I've hustled. I've grinded. Show me the millions. Attaboy. Welcome to the final grind. The final Here, grind. We with money on a much higher level than the ordinary citizen. We feed it back into the machine. Stop saving. Start spending. Become a patron. Let's start by getting you into the lucrative art market to diversify your assets and increase your ROI. Speaking of which, know any artists? But the weird, the weird speed freaks. Music is a pet project, not a viable business scheme. What? Let's return to it once you've set up your estate. Oh my God. Uh, Cindy? You're right. She has the poise of a struggling artist. Very tangible. You can feel the poverty on her. <laughs> Plus, she has paint. Go and support her like the state never could. Oh. Everyone must know that you're a big fucking shark around here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, man, I chose ultra-liberalism and now I'm already starting to regret it. But it's funny, so I'm gonna keep going.